Hey everyone, hope you're having a nice weekend so far. These past couple of weeks I've been trying out different things with crit focus builds and I really wanted to try making something work with my Psyker. Something more balanced for both melee and ranged options. So let's break down our melee first. I went with the Mark VI Combat Knife for the fast light attacks when targeting one enemy which is extremely good for weak spot hits and it's heavy for wide attacks when slashing through the horde. You can also start with a punch which can lead into a smooth combo starter. For my perks, I went with damage to unyielding enemies for solid damage to boss targets, and I went with more crit chance for trimming through the horde to maximize our survivability within our talent tree. To embrace the crits and gain solid damage against enemy target weak spots, I went with uncanny strike for more rending, and to get the most out of our crits, I went with flesh terror for the bleed stacks whenever we make a crit hit. This will start chipping away health on any bosses and enemies that might give us trouble. Next up, my favorite staff to use with this build is the surge staff, or the now named electrokinetic staff. This staff gets a critical bonus attached to it in its stats, and it can have a chance to do even more damage upon making a crit hit. Not to mention, it can also stun lock an enemy in place, giving it more favorability in my opinion amongst a group of ragers or crushers. Keep in mind, the higher the charge, the more damage will be done. For my perks, I went with unyielding again for chip damage from range against any monstrosities and flak damage so we can actually stop any elites from pushing too close to our team. Most other enemies will not stand a chance anyway since this staff also acts like a smite cast and stunning, so it can stun lock and allow your allies to finish the job. That being said, we also want to increase our crit chance with our peril using warp nexus, and we'll want faster charge times with warp flurry for the damage increase. If you do this right at max stacks, you should be chipping close to about 2000 damage with critical hits connecting to your target and an additional 800 to 1200 damage to an assisted smite beside that target since it also connects. This build will focus solely on toughness regen and combat ability regen. With that being said though, I found that having one of each curios can go a long way. All giving more toughness, ability regen, and resistance to the Psyker's most notorious threat, gunners. You'll want the stamina to keep up with your teammates and to defend yourself. As for toughness, it'll be mostly useful when you see our talent tree, and the same goes for our main ability. But since I'm already on that topic, let's just go over the talent tree. I had made several adjustments to fine tune the build to focus more on application of crits and to balance it out for our survivability. So like my other videos, I'll discuss the strengths of the build first. Our passive ability Penetration of the Soul will grant us 10% more rending on warp attacks when above 75% peril. This will be quite common with the Surge Staff, so target any big elites and quell it quickly. With perfect timing, we gain 3% warp damage for 10 seconds on any crit hits, and this can stack up to 5 times. In my testing, I felt like this can go a really long way whenever you're fighting packs of enemies. But to help assist there, we also have Perilous Combustion. This will apply 3 stacks of Soul Blaze to any nearby enemy whenever we kill an elite or specialist. With Warp Rider, since we're going to be usually high with our staff, we can up our damage to 20% more as we increase peril. As for our aura ability, I chose Kinetic Presence for the 7.5% additional damage to all elite enemies for us and our allies in Coherency. This is so useful in higher difficulties due to the groups of elites waiting in choke points. Now aside our strengths, we have defensive abilities that will start to blend together and creating a nice balance between both. Vending Shriek is the combat ability that I found most useful with this build. It helps reduce buildup of peril by quelling 50% of it on use, and with the ability modifiers that I chose, it can even go further. But Calming Eruption allows us to decrease peril generation by 1% per enemy hit, stacking 25 times over 5 seconds. This can give us enough time to charge our staff a couple more times in a pinch, while Creeping Flames helps us with damage over time by applying 1-6 to six stacks of Soul Blaze based on our current peril. Use your Shriek whenever needed in any situation, as we'll have more cooldown with our Curios and Keystone abilities. Speaking of keystones, let's talk about that. I went with Warp Siphon as it's the most useful when juggling our peril. It gives us 7.5% cooldown per charge and can stack up to 4 times for 25 seconds. At no point should you be wasting a charge over time because of our small cooldown window. However, you'll want to stack charges as often as you can because each one grants us 4% more base damage with Empyrean Empowerment. And to help with survivability, we have Essence Harvest, which will replenish 30% of our toughness over 5 seconds on gaining a warp charge, and it can reset whenever you earn another one. Warp Battery allows us to store up to 6 charge in total, netting us 45% cooldown reduction upon use of our combat ability, and it also gives us our toughness back thanks to Quietude. With Quietude, we replenish 5% toughness with every 10% of Peril Quelled. This goes for Manual Quelling and through Venting Shriek. But back to our Keystones real quick. At the very bottom we have two choices that you can make freely here. 
I personally went with Psychic Vampire as this allows us to play more passively with our team, netting us a 4% chance to gain a warp charge anytime someone in Coherency kills an enemy. This I felt proc'd more in testing than the latter, but if you're more aggressive and seek to be frontlining more against elites and specialists, then you can go with Infire Reborn. This will give you a 10% chance on gaining a warp charge with any kills against an enemy when you kill them with Soul Blaze. Now I took Psychic Vampire because it's more likely of a chance to pop when we're just moving along through the level. And I also didn't need to rely on Soul Blaze to net myself a charge with this. Keep in mind that with the latter, you're also only going to be able to gain a charge if the target dies with Soul Blaze. And I figure it's more statistically viable to just go with an all-rounder build than that of one that focuses on one move. That being said, that's about the only change with this build that I would make. Since we can easily take out any close range targets easily with our staff or knife, our blitz ability Brain Rupture can take out any snipers in the distance while our team continues to push ahead. With this, I also chose Kinetic Flare for the occasional instant head pop against specials, elites, and monstrosities. Although you only have a 10% chance for it to apply, keep in mind that you'll need to be in a lower peril state as it won't work at critical levels, but this can take out any threat on the first shot with a cooldown of only 15 seconds. Our passives going forward are all meant to increase our chances of surviving whether alone or with our team. Metal grants us 5% toughness and 5% movement speed for 4 seconds upon making a critical hit, and this could stack 3 times allowing us to play catch up or gain some speed on taking out our next target. One with the warp is another usual pick for me as I value damage reduction a ton within the higher difficulties. This is a passive that's always easy to proc since we're going to be managing our peril levels throughout the entire level. And fighting with our melee while being at higher peril levels will actually keep us from going down due to the reduction on critical peril. To extend our use of Vending Tree, I also took Psychonetics Aura so we can gain our combat ability even faster whenever we or an ally make a kill on an elite or specialist target. And believe me, 5% can go a long way when at critical levels. Because our staff will be our main damaging weapon within group fighting, I actually opted in for taking Solidity so we can quell 30% faster, keeping our toughness up and the ability to fight consistent. And while we trickle down the talent tree, we also pick up some much needed ability modifiers along the way. Those being boost to our crit hit chance, health, peril resistance, range damage, toughness, and toughness damage reduction. This is a very synergetic build, and can carry you quite well in higher difficulties as long as you can manage your peril. Venting Shriek can be useful as it's applied through walls and doors, but it should be used sparingly for elite groups so you don't combust. For psychers that we're looking to embrace what the zealots feel with critical hits, this is pretty dang close. It's a powerful blend of strength and fighting beside your teammates, and it gives you a lot of options to survive when things look really bleak. Thanks again for coming by, and I hope you all continue to have a great weekend decimating your enemies. Please don't forget to drop me a like or a sub if you enjoyed this video, and just like my previous videos, I'm going to be posting a poll on my channel as to which class you think deserves a build next time. But until then, my name is Zen, and I hope to see you again real soon. Take care, and enjoy the match.
both Elora and Shot Sighting. The last you know is to be pitied. A mutant deserves only hatred. Beloved, I think there's something appalling in here.